You'll say, but look at all I've done. You know, there's preachers in that day. The day's coming. It says that, hey, hadn't I cast out devils? Hadn't I, hadn't I, done, hadn't I prophesied thy name? Hadn't I done many wondrous works? Mike, what does it say? He's going to say, depart. I know you not. You work over iniquity, right? Hey, because what did they do? They operated, they operated, they operated, but they weren't operating inside the power of God. They had a form of godliness, but they was denying the power thereof. And, hey, we're in the day when it is. The fact is, either you got the mind of Christ or you got your own mind. You know, when you look there, even the two that are mentioned here, <coughs> when we go back at the beginning, he said, Therefore, my brethren and dearly beloved, long for it. He said, My joy and my crown. He said, So stand fast in the Lord. He said, My dearly beloved. He mentions there, Romeus and there in Citri. When he mentions these two, notice that he, what does he do? He beseeches them that they have the same mind. Church, we've got to have the same mind. Amen. We need to be, hey, you know, we might, hey, everybody in here has a personality. Right. Ooh, the sunlight has got some personality, amen? <laughs> you, hey, I'm looking at some women out there. Ooh, some personality. I'm looking at some men. we got some personality. But in the end, you got to decide, hey, sometimes you have, and let me say this, because you have authority. Now, I've been, Adrian Rogers preaches a message about this, and I love it. He says, you have authority. Hey, that authority was given to you in the garden. You lost it. Jesus won it back. Guess what? And you have authority, right? But let me tell you, he was talking about a message, and I think it's interesting. Sometimes we need to forfeit our authority to help others that are around us. Why? Because, hey, you have to take, hey, sometimes there's things that's going to rub you wrong. Yeah, come on. Who, who in here ever had somebody rub them wrong? Look. Come on. There is some good ones in here. Goes, I have nobody but you wrong from the top of the box. <laughs> you need to get real. Good right. God, come to reality here. And, you know, and the pastor talking about me. Yeah. Who, you know, but you, we've all had it because why? We all have our own way, right? God made you that way. Don't, but don't hate on it. Don't hate on me. Don't hate each other. But, hey, come into the same mind, that accord. You know, evidently those two had some problems. And Paul is saying beseech. When you use that word, he means he's, ur he's urging them with an earnest, compassionate appeal to come together and have the same mind. Church, we need to have the same mind. Amen. You want to know why everything was so good this morning? Because we got to, hey, this morning we was together. In Amen. Amen. We've seen people hurting that come to the altar. That's right. Hey, Lord sent help. Amen. Amen. He ain't going to leave you there. He's going to send a comforter. Hey, that's why he sent him, because, hey, he knew we would need help. Amen? Hey, this morning we needed some songs sang. Guess what? Y'all sang. He picked the right ones. You know, you think you think we picked them. A lot of times we think, oh, no, we didn't. God picked them. You think you're sitting here this morning because, hey, you made a conscious choice to get up and sit here this morning. Can I tell you? Hey, you could. Hey, if you would have made any other decision, can I tell you something? He would have come to naught. Right. It wouldn't have worked out. Amen. It wouldn't. Hey, as much as sometimes, let me say something. I'll even go to say, as much as some of you hate to be here. Hey, some of you hate would say to yourself, "Well, man, you know, sometimes, you know, how many ever say, I can't stand this place. I don't want. Hey, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be amongst these people. But hey, God has placed you here. Amen. Get used to it. You're gonna have to live with me eternity in heaven." <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. But the one thing about eternity is we won't have to worry about it. Amen. Because all these things that try to separate us, be gone. Be gone. Satan, he'll be gone. Go home. Yeah. He'll be, he knows where it is already, Mike. Amen. And hey, he's headed there. Faster, hey, you know. I think about it as I get older, Mike. How many notice as you get older how, that, how fast the days pass? Amen? Amen. Very fast. <laughs> Man, it, it was just 2014. Now it's 2015. Amen? I mean, think about it. That's a year. Just like that. Poof, it's gone, right? Think about it. Hey, I look. Hey, some of you were posting pictures when you on your Facebook about, you know, hey, when first you first join. come on the first yeah. join. You know, look at your picture now and look at yourself then. And you say, Man, Lord, where has it? The time gone. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, I mean, they're just, you know, you know why it brought me to tears? Hey, just, you think about it, just last week it brought me to tears because, man, I look at them, Mike. Amen. Come on. They're men and and, and women, and and, what, and they were just, it just seemed like And we saw it, and we know it. And we're, 
we're going through, and we go through and look at it. You know, I look in the future, Cheyenne, just right there. You know, David, before you know it, where's he at? Where are you at, David? Where's he at? He went to the back. Well, hey, before you know it, Diane, boom. She'll be married away. Where's she at? Big David, big David, yeah. It'll be poop, and she'll be off and married, and she'll found that man that God's given oh, her. Amen. Man, come on, look at me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll happen, poop, just like that. I see you got that sand over there. Go on. The break that I had in the sand. <laughs> but you know, you look at it because it was just yesterday. Look at these two right here. They're uh -huh. prime example. Yeah, just yesterday. Just yesterday. I mean, just, that's how it's passed. You can't, you, why can't you hold your own sand? Because you look at it. As we're speaking here this morning, if, I, I should have just brought a, a handful of sand. Let's see how much of it ended up. I just didn't want to make a mess. Amen. That's right. But, you know, you think about it. How much would have ended up in my hand? How much would I have lost already, Mike? Amen. Because there's nothing you can do. Time marches on. Billy Graham said it this way. He said that, man, scientists, as smart as they are, they hadn't invented another day. Not another minute. And I hate you think about it. Not another second. They, as smart as they are, all that we're capable of doing, we can't do that. You ever thought about that? But yet God can. God can give you time. God can stop the time. He's done it. I've seen it in His Word. Amen. He can do it all of it. And inside of the midst of that, if you think about it, He is able to subdue what all things into Himself. There's a problem when we look at that. He said He urged them. When you go on in and look at it, he said, I urge you, he said, to be a true companion. When you go back and you look at what the word means there, he said that, he said that, uh, he said, I beseech your audience, and he said, I beseech Sentry that they, that they be of the same mind in the Lord, true companions one to another. And he said, I entreat thee also, he said, a true yoke fellow. That means one. Can I say church? We need to carry one another's burden. Come on. You know, sometimes, you know, it gets tiring. You know, it's hard because the fact is, let me tell you, there's going to be some instances where, hey, there's going to be some in the church that might even have more of a burden than you. What did I say? Carry it. <coughs> Help them. Get in the yoke with them. You know, just like the oxen were yoked together, why do we have to be in the same mind? You couldn't put, hey, you couldn't put the ass and the oxen together, could you, Mike? Because one's going to pull harder than the other, and they're going to, hey, and, and what's going to happen when you yoke them together in that manner? And can I say this? It's the same thing in a relationship, hey, man. If you got an unbeliever and a believer, hey, you, you unequally yoke together, you're just going to be walking in circles. In circles and in circles. But can I tell you, as a church, if we are unequal, hey, not yoked together in a manner that both are pulling, both are carrying that burden, can you know where we go? In circles. But he said to be a true yoke fellow. We ought to be able and be willing to give one another love, support, yes. have compassion for one another. And the women who also, notice what Paul, he mentions him as the women who labored with me in the gospel. You know, that is a telling phrase of these two women. They were a faithful workers and Paul and to his work in the gospel. Yet, falling out with each other, Paul went and he knew that it was unfortunate dispute had to be cleared up because he wanted to see them continue for the cause of Christ. Now, you know, here that shows pastor's heart. Amen. Can I tell you? It don't matter how much. Let me turn around so I'm not looking at nobody right here. Because <laughs> so, if I'm looking at you, you go, Pastor preaching to me. No, no. Let me tell you something. I, hey, I don't care how many disagreements you have with each other. <coughs> Can I tell you, walk together, that's my heart. Amen. Have the same mind for one another, that's my heart. That you love each other, that's my heart. Amen. And that in the end, that we move forward, Amen. and I can say this, looking at you, for the call of Christ together. Amen. You know, in the year that we have coming up, you notice there that we it, he gives a word here and he tells us, when we go down there in verse 3, he keeps on going down and he says there, he said, I entreat thee also, a true good fellow, help those women which are labored with me. He said in the gospel, he said, with Clement also and with the other fellow laborers, he said, whose names are what? In the book of life. In the end, Mike, what are we aiming for? That's, not, that's right. That everybody's name is there. Everybody's yeah, right. I don't really want to serve Christ with you here. Amen. I want to worship God forevermore there. And when you think about that, he tells us something important that I think is probably one of the most important things in the chapter. He said, rejoice. Amen. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. You better rejoice. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let me share something with you right there. There's times as a church we're going to cry together. Amen. Hey, what did Ron say, Hudson? There's times we're going to laugh together. I'm going to tell you, but in those times, whether we're crying or whether we're laughing, Mark, there's one thing that we ought to be able to do. And not because we're here with each other, but because we're here to worship the Lord. We ought to be able to rejoice in what God's done. This morning, I don't know where you stand with the Lord, but let me entreat you that if you're not thinking on the thing, if you don't have the mind of Christ, if you've had your own things at heart, if you're trying to hold on to that thing yourself, and you've not put your hand into God's hand, you've not put your life, you've not placed it securely and fixed it securely in Christ, this morning, why don't you allow God Allow God. Why don't you just quit giving him that little bit? Why don't you give it all to him this morning? Because when you look at what this is saying, and you take into account, and that therefore, as Paul mentions here, and we go back there, he said, Finally, brethren, he said, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things, he said, are pure, and whatsoever things are of a good report. He said, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he said, to think on these things. And what did he say in 9? Because of that, he said, those things which you have both learned, received, heard, and you've seen of me, he said, to do. And then what did he say? He makes a glorious promise, Mike. He said, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. This morning, if you'll bow your head, close your eyes. James, do whatever the Lord lays on your heart this morning. I ask you a question. This is why I'm going to leave the invitation with you this morning. Do you want God in your life? He's invited you this morning. He said, Come. You know, I think about when He calls the first two disciples, me and John were sitting there that night and we were thinking about it. And the invitation was, and they, they uh, asked Jesus where he was staying, and Jesus said, come and see. He gave them the invitation, not only to see where he was, but to know what he was doing, to understand the ministry that they were called into this morning. You know, the Lord wants to give you peace. The Lord wants to, he wants to give you that thing that you're seeking most in your life, security, peace, love. Who all don't need that? If you're saying, I don't need it, then you're denying. You're denying something that God has put in you. I'm going to tell you something this morning. Everybody that sits here under the sound of my voice, you need love. You need mercy. You say, well, why do I need mercy, Pastor? I don't understand it because think about what you've done. No, let's hold on a minute. Let's back up. Think about what you were born into. You know, do what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. If you'd have lived a perfect life, if you'd done no wrong, you know, you're still born into sin. This morning, we need His mercy. We need His grace. <coughs> the unmarried in favor of the Lord. And as we continue to walk for the cause of Christ, God has placed you here as a church, as the body of believers together. And I'm going to say something that might be shocking to you. But you need each other. You need each other this morning. You might try to deny it, but you need each other. You know how I know that? Because God said so in His Word in Hebrews. He said, Forsake not the assembly of yourselves in a manner which some are, but it's are one another love so much more as we see the day of Christ approach you. You need each other. This morning, I don't know where you stand. If everybody will stand to you, please. Bow your heads this morning. I don't know where you stand this morning. But if God spoke to your heart this morning, if the Lord's dealing with you, there's already some that's coming to the altar. I'm going to say right now, the altar's already open before I ever invite you. So you don't even know what I'm inviting you for. I invite you to come and be saved if you're lost this morning. I invite you this morning to come if you've 
you've been trusting in yourself, trying to hold on to your own life, and it's passing through your fingers, and it's slipping through, and you just, you know, it's as if something's missing. I invite you this morning to come and be made whole because Jesus said he could do it. I know he can do it because he did it for my life. favor that had us all understand. I don't know where you said it, but you'll come. I'm going to tell you Jesus as well. Don't let the devil lie to you this morning. Don't let him hold you in that seat this morning. He is a liar. The truth's not in him. He might have told you all manner of things, but don't believe it this morning. Believe God. Jesus said, I love you. He said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This <coughs> you have an opportunity. If you don't know him right now, to know Jesus. You have an opportunity this morning as a Christian to say that I've been trying to hold on to it all by myself. You have an <coughs> opportunity this morning to place your life in the hands of the man, the God. Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, I thank you for these that's already gathered around the altar. So much the song for these this morning, the music that you chose chosen, Father. Lord, the message, Lord, that you give us. Father, the Sunday school that was taught. Father, Lord, I thank you for it all. Jesus, Lord, as we come to you this morning, Lord, I pray that you bring this church, bind us together, Lord, with the love. Father, with the Spirit of Christ around us. Father, with a head. Father, about us. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we're going to give you thanks this morning. Already for what you've done in our lives. Lord, we pray all these.